If you want to win your bracket pool, you have to pick the champion. This is a truth that we all know, we all understand. There's no worse feeling than being ahead by 20, 30 points only for someone, only for your brother-in-law to catch you in the end because you got Connecticut and they won. So in this video, I'm going to do exactly what I did in my previous video is I'm going to show you some data and that data is going to be just for the championship game. And we're going to try to figure out who's going to win the champion. Now, one of the things that we really need to consider here is if you're just in, a, if you're in a pool, if you're in a bracket pool and you only have one bracket to fill out, that's not, that's not any fun. And your champion goes out in the first couple rounds and that's, that's a bummer. When you get in the pool, at least have the option of doing two brackets, maybe four brackets or more. You know, I talked about ESPN challenge. I'm going into that one because I'm going to get 25 brackets. With that, I feel pretty good about my chances of picking the champion. And I'll show you why in just a second. Okay, first of all, just a quick review. This is the Ken Palm stats for 314. That's today's date. And you can see here, Houston and Connecticut are still dominating. I mentioned in my last video, Houston. Connecticut, had, it's actually Houston. Houston looks so good. It's just amazing. They were in the American Conference. Now they're in the Big 12, and they're still dominating. Watch out. And barring any kind of injuries, unforeseen circumstances, let's just go with Houston. Anyways, we have other contenders here, which we'll talk about. So here's the idea. This is just the championship games from 2001 to 2023, and we're looking at the blue dots here are the winners, and the orange dots are the losers. Now, this is the same exact axes I had up on my last video, but what I'm going to do here is zoom in on this since we just have a few dots and reduce my axes here, 80 to 110 on the adjusted defense and 100 to 130 on adjusted offense. But look at the bottom. Clearly, we can do better on the bottom here, vertical bottom. So if we draw this line right here, 113.8, 7 of the eight teams below that line are losers, right? Lost the championship game. Only one won. So what I'm going to do here is a slightly different strategy. Just instead of looking on the outside, which is what I just did, I'm going to look on the inside, and I'm going to try to capture, find the boundaries that captures the blue dots. In other words, we're going to try to figure out who the champions will be, the overall champion will be. Similarly, over here at 95.2 for the adjusted defensive efficiency, Three of those four lost, except for that one at the very top. And that one at the top, I'd really like to capture somehow. And now if I just did these two boundaries right here, and I did instead of, like I said, instead of going out, going in and capturing all the, I captured 20 of the 22 blue dots, which is awesome. However, uh, I want that top one there. I think they deserve to be considered here. So what I'm drawing here is again, this slanted line, that essentially shows the adjusted efficiency margin. And any team above that line has an adjusted efficiency margin of 30, of more than 30, which is very high. So that blue dot up there got that one. Here's my boundary conditions overall, adjusted offense of 113.8 or above, and adjusted defense less than 95.2. Both those conditions have to be met. Or, again, going for the high numbers here, the high adjusted, if the adjusted efficiency margin is over 30. Those are the conditions for the overall champion. And those worked out in a 21 of the last 22 seasons. So <laughs> that's what I'm going with to pick my champion. And if you want to see the current Ken Palm stats and who the contenders are, there we go. Houston, Connecticut at the top. Houston has a number one defense in the country. Uh, a really good offense, solid offense. Um, so they're looking really good here. Uh, Connecticut is in there, Auburn, Tennessee, two SEC teams, North Carolina, who just beat Duke on their home court. And the surprise of this contender list is at the bottom there, Michigan State. They barely got in with their adjusted offensive efficiency just over the threshold. Now, look at what teams are not in there. Purdue, Duke, Arizona. Each of those teams had a good adjusted offensive efficiency. In fact, Purdue was number one in that category but their defense was not. It was over 95.2. In fact, it was sometimes over 96, 97. So since you look at those dots, no team has ever won the championship in the last 22 years with that poor of a defense. We're not going to pick them. In other words, they could have been contenders, but their defense let them down. As one of my favorite actors of all time said, I could have been a contender, 
I could have been somebody. Yep, you could have been somebody, Marlon, if you had a better defense. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. I'm going to make this real simple on Monday after Selection Sunday. I'm going to sit down on Selection Sunday and look at my brackets here and see how this works out. And I'm going to pick the contenders. Since I have 25 brackets here, I'm going to make sure that I distribute my contenders across those 25 brackets. I'm going to try to get myself the best possible, right? I'm going to spread out my championship, my champion. Now, if I don't make it and it falls outside the box I just drew for you here, so be it, right? That's part of what happens. I mean, just because I got 21 out of 22 doesn't mean I'm going to get it this year. That's, that's the game. That's, you know, that's probability. That's statistics. That just happens sometimes. So, but I feel pretty darn good about my chance of making it. So anyways, I will make one more video about this when I fill out my brackets on Monday after Selection Sunday. Looking forward to that. See you in the next video.